past, you'll see the same ones that you had before um, in a different setting. This year, we are in Grandma Taylor's Cafe. Oh, Taylor? <laughs> Grandma Taylor's Cafe in Cricket County. And uh, they'll set it up for you. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna oh. give anything away here tonight. Uh, but before we start, I wanna thank, number one, all of y'all for coming and supporting us. Our church has, has really been a good support for us. We sort of took over oh, Memorial gosh. Hall here for the last oh, month. We appreciate um, those who had to step aside to let us do that. We really do. Uh, I want to thank the cast because they've been absolutely wonderful. Um, I had to miss several this time, but they really they didn't need me. I can tell you that they just really didn't need me. And then the heart and soul of this one, as I said last night, and I will say again, has been Gloria Brumfield. This was her dream four years ago that we would do an adult play. And because we've done so many children's plays like for 18 years, and she wanted to do one, she found one. And four years later, we're still doing it. So, Gloria's dream thrives. Um, hours and hours have been put into this. I can't tell you uh, how much it has, but it's not a complaint. And it's not, uh, uh, I'm not telling you this because um, we want you to be appreciative. We tell you this because that is part of our gift to you. It's the long walk and the work that is also part of the gift of what you're going to see tonight. Uh, you get to take off the bow tonight but it's been full of a lot of love and a lot of dedication. Um, thanks to English Sound for giving us lights and sound tonight. I want to thank them. And now, if you're ready, I know they are, let's visit the Cricket County Cafe and see what Christmas is like there. Well, let's see. I think I'll take some fried ham hocks covered in squirrel gravy. And you? Now, Walter, you know gravy ain't good for your health. He'll have the boiled carrots instead, sweetie. Boiled <laughs> carrots. <laughs> but don't little what's Christmas Eve dinner without fried ham hocks covered in squirrel gravy. Well, all right, but just because it's Christmas, your health ain't what it used to be, so you still gotta eat the boiled carrots. Bless his heart, he works out over at Bubba's gym, but I swear his favorite machine is the vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what will you have, Mother Hen? Oh, I just can't decide. What would you have if you was me? Uh, prime rib, but not from here. <laughs> Okay, I'll have this crawdad stew with a side of biscuits. Oh, or do I want cornbread? Just surprise me. <laughs> you must be wondering how a refined, sophisticated debutante such as myself <laughs> ended up serving tables at a greasy spoon called the Cricket County Cafe on Christmas Eve. Well, it's a nightmare. It started years ago when our country cousins invited us to Cricket County for the reading of Uncle Zeke's will. Howdy, Cousin Oswald. We're going to be reading Uncle Zeke's will on Christmas Eve, so y'all come on out to Cricket County. Now, we're on our way. We were all very excited about the reading of Uncle Zeke's amendment because we found out he was rich, very rich. Oil wells, diamond mines. You mean to tell me Uncle Zeke was rich? In the middle. What are we waiting for? Let's go to Cricket County. And that's exactly what we did. But on that cold Christmas Eve, we were very disappointed in what Uncle Zeke had left us. I, Uncle Zeke Taylor, leave all of my secret oil fields and diamond mines to the Cricket County country cousins. Can you believe it? They got the millions. Those nasty hillbillies inherited everything. Oh, still causes me shortness of breath when I think about it. Oh, well, anyway. Here it is a few Christmases later, and lo and behold, we get another call from the Cricket County Clan. 
Hello. Cousin Oswald, it seems Buckshot Sims, Uncle Zeke's lawyer buddy, has found what they call an amendment to the will. You mean there's more to that will than we knew about? When do you want us there, Elkin? Well, we're going to be reading it after Grandma's Cafe closes on Christmas Eve. Well, we'll be there no matter what. But you're supposed to take Judge Galloway out for Christmas Eve dinner. Yeah, I know. Think of something. We can't afford to miss this opportunity. Okay. We'll be there, Elkin. Don't worry. Okay, Cousin Oswald. We'll see you then. So here we are in this bumpkin of a place. Cousin Oswald insisted that we help out here at the cafe, clear the customers out so that we could hear the reading of the amendment and still get home in time for Christmas. Oh, believe me, only the thought of oil wells and diamond mines would cause me to wear something this repulsive. I just hope that my nerves can make it till closing time. Dear, would you like some of this frog liver jelly on a biscuit for dessert? Huh, I ain't sure. Do you recommend the frog liver jelly, young lady? Oh, I think the frog liver jelly is repugnant. Well, golly, that sounds good enough for me. Won't you just bring us a couple of donuts? I only eat imported caviar on Christmas Eve. Well, throw some on the deep fryer. We'll try anything once. <laughs> <laughs> they must be kidding. I'm afraid we don't serve such delicacies here in this horse trough. Now, tell me what you want to eat or get out. What did you say? You heard me. Order your food or hit the road. I have not got time to sit around and listen to two hayseeds all day. <laughs> Let's go, Dorothy. We don't have to take this ugly behavior. You just wait till Anna Jean Taylor hears about this. You'll have your job. Oh, she can have it. I don't want to work here anyway. Hey, excuse me. Is something the matter here? Well, we came in to have our annual Christmas Eve dinner. And here's the Christmas story like we've done for the last 50 years. But this this waitress has asked us to leave, so that's just what we're doing. Oh, Mimi, she didn't mean it. She's just playing a little Christmas joke. She really wants you to stay, Mimi. Tell them you'd like for them to stay. Get lost. See? Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. If, if, if you'll stay, we'll sing some Christmas carols. Deck the halls with the boughs of holly. <laughs> Mimi, how many of Grandma's customers have you run off like that with your rude behavior? Oh, I lost count. <laughs> what are you trying to prove, anyway? Oh, Oswald, this whole crazy scheme was your idea, anyway. I mean, we need to clear the customers out and read the amendment and get all of our deserved millions, and I'm just trying to do my part. Well, if Grandma Taylor finds out what you're doing, she'll oh. come after you with wild abandon. Oh, I'm not afraid of Grandma Taylor. That's all right. I'm afraid enough for the both of us. <laughs> Where's that Aussie boy? Well, there speaks the devil. I'm in the dining room, Grandma Taylor. Here, look busy. Do something. <laughs> Have you saw Fester? He is supposed to be working in the kitchen today. My name is Oswald, ma'am. Fester's gone down to the post office. He said something about picking up a package. Where in the Sam Hill are all my customers? I'm sure they'll be streaming in any minute now. Hey, you know, with the right brooch, this might make a nice accessory. Mimi, you're supposed to be wiping off the table. <laughs> she ain't the brightest bulb on the tree, is she? Oh, oh. Listen, Missy, I'll have you know I have two advanced degrees in fashion design. Well, I got two pork rinds in my freezer, but that don't make me smart. Now, if you want to work for me, I'm going to see some work done. Oh, the Christmas rush should have already started. I don't understand where my regulars are. It's real cold outside, Grandma Taylor. Perhaps they just decided to stay home this year. Hogwash. My customers wouldn't stay home on Christmas Eve for nothing. They've been a-coming for the food and the nativity and the reading of the Christmas story for 50 years. And why are you sitting down? There is work to be done. Uh, but, 
I'm so fatigued. I don't care about your medical symptoms. Let me give you a little advice, young city girl. The best part about wearing boots is that your socks don't have to match. Now, you pawned your pretty little head about that for a while. Uh, she will, Grandma Taylor, I promise she will. Read the money, child. What are you doing with all this work that needs to be done? Well, I'm putting up posters for the Miss Cricket County contest. Land sakes alive. Everybody's doing something but helping me out today. And look at there, the Christmas tree ain't even been decorated and it's Christmas Eve. So you're running for Miss Cricket County, huh? No, I'm running for Mr. Greyhound. Of course I'm running for Miss Cricket County and I'm gonna win it this year. How many times have you entered this contest? A seven, and I ain't won it once. How'd you that? That's just what I thought. You think anybody with my charm and beauty would land it real easy like? But that daggum Frida Grumble wins it every year. Frida Grumble? That's right. She finds out who the judge is and she butters him up. No. She surely does. And then she, once she lands that title, she's made him all these promises while she drops him like a hot potato. Well, wow, that's shameful. That's just what I thought. The only thing more shameful is a young lady dodging over her responsibilities at her dear old grandma's cafe. I knew no grandma. Oh, I'm real sorry about that, but campaigning is hard work, and I'm going to win that title that I so deserve. But if a judge crowns the winner, why are you going around putting up posters all over the place? Because <laughs> nobody knows who the judge is. I mean, could be you for all I know. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Brenda May, we saturated the area with your likeness so your constituents would clamor to the polls and pull the lever that will successfully excel you to the prominent status that you so desire. What did she say? <laughs> we hung up your pictures. <laughs> Heavens, child, if you're going to talk, show us the baby. Don't tell us about the labor pains. <laughs> I'll say this again. But if the judge is going to crown the winner, what are you going around putting up pictures for? Because <laughs> nobody knows who the judge is. <laughs> and firing up the grill, I don't know where that fester has gone off to. Okay, you know, working in a little country cafe like this on Christmas Eve just really puts me in spirit. Hmm. Hey, hmm. since you're such in that Christmas spirit, how about uh, giving me my Christmas present early? Well, I've thought about that, and uh, I don't think I'm going to give you anything this year. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle bells. Oswald, you wouldn't do that me, would you? Oh, uh, Mimi, you know I'd like to get you everything you ever wanted for Christmas. I just don't know how to gift wrap Bloomingdale's. <laughs> he didn't have to say that. It's true. But he didn't have to say it. you're hanging that upside down. Well, then you do it. I don't know why I agreed to such exertion anyway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
first menus. Uh, my name is Mimi. Your name will be mud if you don't get them some menus. Here you go, ladies. Here's a nice table right over here by the kitchen. silverware and I'll take these nice ladies order. I <laughs> don't do silverware. Mimi, roll the silverware. Please. I'm too good for this place. I just want to get my money and go. Ooh. Sorry about that. Uh, just having one of those days, you know. Good Christmas song. much fun since I used to sing off key in the church choir. Oh, I remember that, Brenda May, because you used to sit next to me. I mean, really. <laughs> sure enough. But you know, then the preacher promised me two weeks from tithing if I just promised not to even sing in the church choir. <laughs> but Brenda May, you have the voice of an angel. Stop fibbing on Christmas Eve. We both know she has the voice of Brother Greg. <laughs> I sure would appreciate you two spreading the word around town that I'm running this year. Uh, I'm afraid we can't do that, Brenda May. Hush up, Harry. Why in the world not? Um, because we're campaigning for Frida Grumble. Why, you can't be serious. So, have you ladies decided what you'd like to order? I'm sorry, Brenda May, but I've got to campaign for Rita Grumble. She's my late husband's brother's second cousin on his daddy's side. <laughs> I hear the fried pork chops are really very good. You both have done hurt me to the core. Come in here, my grandma's rest restaurant. You're the enemy, and you are not welcome anymore. Get out Brenda here. May, you didn't mean that. Ladies, I'm afraid the heat from the kitchen's got to her. But too, yeah, be quiet. It's just getting good. But we can't leave. What about the Christmas story? The food? It's tradition. Well, why don't you just run on over to Frida's house and see if she'll feed you? <laughs> <laughs> Besides, you should have went on a diet years ago. <laughs> Brenda May, do you realize what you just did? I don't want to be around when Grandma Taylor finds out. I don't care. Winning this contest is the most important thing in the whole wide world to me, so Grandma's just going to have to get back. Now, 
Now, if you two, excuse me, I gotta go help my sister Glenda May with her chicken. <laughs> oh, you know, I should have known it's gonna be a bad day. When I woke up this morning and my artificial flowers was dead. <laughs> well, as you would say, Mimi, Grandma Taylor's gonna throw one hissy of a finger. <laughs> Doing this uh, somewhere right here. Oh, oh, see. Oh, yeah, there you go. Howdy, everybody. What's happening? Oh, I, I went up. Howdy, everybody. Like, 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 what happening, dude? Is, is, is everything cool, man? <laughs> Fester? Fester Taylor, is that you? Oh, oh, watch out, Fester. Fester, take off those sunglasses before you kill yourself. I can't take them off. Being cool ain't where it's on there. My heavens, that hillbilly is two dishes short of picnic. <laughs> Don't call me no hillbilly. I ain't no hillbilly no more. I'm what you call Debbie Mayer. <laughs> Debbie Mayer? Why, well, Fester, you look ludicrous. Well, thank you, Cousin Oswald. I, I, I don't have a break with it. Let me see that. Cool Dude Magazine, huh? Where did you get this? Well, well Cousin Oswald, I... I'm Petunia. Oh, oh well, Cousin Oswald, I, I was tired about being called a bumpkin all the time, so I done picked this up here down at the quick corner, next to the Piglet Wiggly there, and you know what it told me? It told me that I can be noticed. <laughs> that I can stand out from the crowd. Believe me, Fester, you've always stood out from the crowd. Fester, those headphones aren't even connected to anything. Yeah, they're here, yeah, that's connected to my ear. Go on, Fester, get out of my kitchen. Oh, Cousin Petunia? I'm Oswald. Oh, 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 oh. Cousin Petunia, would you explain my new cool look to Grandma, please? <laughs> What's going on in the kitchen? Oh, Grandma, Grandma! Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll get right in the kitchen. Fester, uh, who are you? This is Fester. Fester, this is cousin Pete, not Grandma. Oh, Fester? Yeah, this is Fester. He's Mr. Cool Dude now. <laughs> What's going on with Grandma Taylor in the kitchen? <laughs> well, I spilled a little grease on the floor, broke her best mixing bowl, but I guess the biggest thing is I let her best doing squirrel out the back door. <laughs> that woman get upset over the smallest things. Somebody better tell that Fester Taylor to get his rub in here if he wants to see the new year. I just got a big order over the phone. Uh, we'll find you, Grandma Taylor. Well, I'll get this order started. But Ozzy, go find my squirrel. I can't make my secret gravy without it. Okay, Grandma Taylor. Somebody better turn Mr. Cool Dude here over their knee before Grandma does. Oh, by the way, that uh, Judge Galloway, he shouldn't be showing up here any minute now. I still can't believe you invited him all the way out here for Christmas Eve. Yeah, I know. I need that job if I'm ever going to make a name for myself in the legal world. Besides, he'll think this place is quaint. <laughs> quaint. But he's an important man, a big-time judge. Yeah, I know. But I'll have him eat right out of my hand before it's over. I need my squirrel! I'm coming, Grandma Taylor. And what's going on over here? Fester is changing his image. Well, his what image. do I look like to you, Cousin Pete? Well, if you really want to know... Be careful, Pete. Well, you look uh, unique, Fester. Right? Oh, is unique anything like cool? What do you expect from somebody who thought that three wise men were firemen? Well, the Bible says they come from a bar. <laughs> you said that, that was a long time ago. I done grown up now. And 
that was last year. I'll tell you another thing that hair magazine taught me. Yes, sir, Ray. You fucking see. Wait till you see this. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You just wait. You ain't gonna believe this. You just wait and see. Now, if some chicks come along and they see me dressed real cool like like this hair, and they see me, <laughs> yeah, there you go. And they see me out here and they're and I'm out here topping on their pooter, they won't be able to resist. Here's your chance. Well, but, but I ain't cracked it up yet. Shh. It's all right, Pastor. Just give it your best shot. Um, excuse me. I'm from out of town, and I was wondering how to get to Tick Ridge from here. Well, sometimes I walk, and sometimes I take a red pickup truck. <laughs> no. How do I drive there? Uh, from the front seat would be the thing. <laughs> What I could get for my sister. Uh, it depends. How much do you want for? <laughs> well, uh, Merry Christmas. Oh, well, wait. Haven't hey, you noticed anything about me? Well, uh, your train of thought doesn't seem to have a caboose. No, ma'am. I'm on my pooter here looking into buying some stock. Uh, that's nice. Good night. Well, well, that's what cool people do. You know, they buy a heap of stock. Okay, what kind of stock are you buying? Well, chicken, mostly. I might even buy a few cows later on. Oh, goodness, you're sitting on a gold mine. No, no, that ain't worth nothing. <laughs> you mean to tell me that you are an entrepreneur? No, ma'am. I'm a tailor. Fester Taylor is my name, and coolness is my game. What's your game, you groovy looking chick, you? <laughs> I'm a psychiatrist. Oh. A head doctor, you know. <laughs> yeah, I read about them there in my magazine. I bet you run into your chair of cuckoos in your line of work. Yeah. Uh, yes, and sometimes when I'm just asking for directions. Well, <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. I have this one friend you could really study up on. He's a few pickle short of a jar. He's a bubble walk plum. His cheese are done slid off his cracker. I get the picture. Well, I tell you, I tell you this. Bless his heart. I guess it wasn't his fault. He was real poor as a kid. That man was so poor that when he was just a youngin', he didn't have a stitch of clothes on. Uh, goodbye. But what what would he have found when he was fourteen? They bought him a hat so he could look out the window. That's right. <laughs> well, cause everybody can't be as cool as me. Hey, where'd you go? Master, she had to leave. Well, how did I do being cool, Cousin Petunia? Well, Uncle Pete, but you did fine, Fester. You did just fine. Hey, Fester, you better get yourself in here at once. But, but I ain't broke the news to Grandma yet. She won't understand my cool ways. Well, come on in here. I'll help you tell her. I don't know anything at all about this kitchen equipment. Go on, Fester. I'll put up your computer for you. Well, I'm much obliged, Cousin Pete. Come on, Grandma! and take off those sunglasses. As you can see, things were starting to get pretty interesting. Little did we know just how much more interesting things would become. <coughs> howdy, howdy, howdy. See what I mean? <laughs> Linda May, aren't you supposed to be helping Grandma Taylor in the kitchen this year? Why, she ain't got time. She's working on something real important. Something's going to get my name in the record books and make me real famous. <laughs> Next to me, when in Miss Cricket County, it's the most important thing that's ever happened in these parts. I could even get on TV. Well, if it's that important, then you've got to tell us. No, my lips are sold. <laughs> Give me that box. <laughs> hey, come on, that's not fair. Did, did she just say chicken? Well, here it is. The official amendment to Uncle Zeke's will. That's it, huh? Can I see it? I'm sorry, Cousin Pete, but the instructions clearly say that it can't be read until Grandma's Cafe closes tonight. <laughs> 
Can I touch it? I, I just want to touch it. Now, I'm sorry, Cousin Mimi, but rules is rules. But I've been working so hard today. I've been waiting on mean customers and wiping icky so hard. Well, doesn't mean me, I guess one time won't hurt anything, but just touch it real easy like if you would, please. Okay, thank you, Cousin Elkin. Works every time. <laughs> just a little look. I just want a little bitty, tiny Mimi, look. Just Mimi, Mimi, stop it. We'll look at it with everyone else. Oh, drat. Nothing fell out. <laughs> Give me that. A minute. We'll all find out in due time what this here amendment says. All I know is Buckshot said it's going to make somebody real happy this time, somebody that didn't get nothing the last time. Buckshot? That's right, Buckshot Sims. He's Cricket County's only lawyer, and he practices law out of the back of his taxidermy shop. <laughs> My nerves can't take it. Between you and me, I'm going to have just got to find out what we're getting out of this deal. I've just got to. Hey. Where's all the customers? Oh, well, you see, uh, well, here's customers as we speak. Finally! Welcome to the Cricket County Cafe. Table for two. <laughs> we're a little bit confused. We were given this address by Oswald Tippenheimer. Oh, we're supposed to meet him for Christmas Eve dinner. And I uh, sure hope this is a mistake. <laughs> we can't be eating here. Well, you must be the gentleman Oswald looking for. Mr. Judge Galloway, young man. That's okay, dear. It's Christmas. There's no time for formalities. Children. I don't know why in the world <coughs> our reservation said that lavish French restaurant was canceled for this rancid place. Well, yeah, you just got lucky, I guess. <laughs> you see, Mr. Judge. I'm sorry. Judge Galloway. Oswald had a last minute emergency. Yes, you see, the poor old lady that runs this place need a little help to handle the horde of customers for her Christmas Eve customers. Yeah, I can see this place is really hopping. Well, they'll be pouring in here just any minute, Judge. And the little old lady, everyone calls her grandma. She just can't get around as good as she used to. Yeah, poor thing. Bless her heart. She can't see either. Her glasses are so thick that when she looks at a map, she can see people are waving at her. And out of the kindness of his heart, instead of pushing her aside and leaving the helpless old granny high and dry, Oswald decided to have you come here. That way he wouldn't have to miss the dinner with you that he's been looking forward to for so long. Well, it's a good thing. We have access to our private helicopter. We would have never made it here otherwise. Well, really, it was quite an adventure. It wasn't that much trouble. These mountains, they're, they're rather high up, aren't they? Yeah. Well, I mean a lot to Oswald, you went to all the trouble. Well, it was either that or have me cook. So I said lovingly to my wife, I said, Dear, let's eat out tonight and give the smoke detector a rest. <laughs> George, don't start with me. I am not in the middle. Well, sometimes it just wouldn't hurt for you to go with the flow, dear. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'll go tell Oswald that you're here. Hey, Oswald. Hey, welcome to our diner. I hope you all enjoy the bills here. Well, just find us a seat. My feet are killing me. Well, I can see why. Your shoes look like they're two sizes too small. <laughs> Elkin, let's get them seated, shall we? Here we are, the best seats in the house. George, aren't you forgetting something? Of course. How silly of me. <laughs> You don't care for me anymore. No, just don't start that again. <laughs> he doesn't realize it yet, but when George married me, 
He got a prize. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, I wonder if you'll let me when I'm old and gray. <laughs> well, he does, doesn't he? <laughs> Could I bring you all something to drink while we wait for Oswald? Yeah, uh, bring me some coffee and make sure it's bitter and strong. And when you bring it out to me, I want you to yell at me. I don't understand. I'm feeling a little homesick. Oh, I get it. His wife must make Elton. terrible. So, so you say that the uh, lady who runs this place, she's in bad health? Yes, sir. She can just barely get around anymore. Faster, Taylor, you get yourself back here this minute. Now you know you can't get away from me, so don't even try and get out of those ridiculous clothes. We have got tons of work to do in the kitchen. But, 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 but Grandma, cool, cool people don't do things like work in the kitchen at Grandma Cafe. I never thought the day would come that my very own flesh and blood would sass me this way. Now, for the last time, you get back in your regular clothes. Uh, this is a poor old lady who's on, on her last legs? <laughs> now, you hush up. This don't concern you. <laughs> you can't tell the judge to hush. <laughs> and don't you know critters ain't allowed in my cafe? Get that thing out of here. This, dear lady, is a chin chill. Well, I don't care if it's a ja jackrabbit. It ain't a hen. But Grandma Taylor, it, it's a fur, an accessory. Mrs. Galloway, that's a lovely wrap. Does it keep you warm? I didn't buy it to keep her warm. I bought it to keep her quiet. <laughs> Do you see how he talks to me? <laughs> Esther, what in the world's going on? It's way past Halloween. Because y'all could I'm just trying to be cool. Esther, if you want to be cool, go outside. It's 10 degrees out there. <laughs> well, well, there he is. He's sitting over there. Oh, yeah. Uh, Judge Galloway, sir, how good to see you. How was your flight? Mr. Tippenheimer, it seems like you've gotten us here under false pretenses. Well, what do you mean, sir? Well, you told me your your grandmother was so old that she was a waitress at the Last Supper. Who said that? Oh, you must have misunderstood me, sir. I meant she just doesn't get around the way she used to. Says who? And you brought your lovely wife with you. Hey, sir, you get yourself back here. <laughs> what was that? Look how lovely this is. Why don't we all just sit down and not enjoy a nice Christmas Eve dinner? Well, that sounds just fine, young lady. Can you believe what these young'uns are coming to? Who would have thought that my very own grandson would talk to me like he is? Don't worry about Fester. I'll talk some sense into him. <laughs> Fester, do you remember how you used to like cut firewood, don't you? Judge, this year acts is real special, Fester. It's been in our family for over 200 years. It's only had four new handles and two new heads put on it. I don't play with axes no more. <laughs> well, now, isn't this just cozy? <laughs> well, not with Grandma Moses hovering over me. <laughs> Did I hear the telephone ringing? <laughs> <laughs> it may be another shakeout order. Well, that bastard, I ain't through with you yet. If I have to take a hickory switch after you, I will. Now, Grandma, I'll help you out in the kitchen. Let's get it. Petunia. I have just got to find out what's, what we're going to be getting out of this deal. I just got to. So, um, I've got a plan. Will you help me? Mimi, I don't know. Must you wear that hat at the table? Oh, oh I'm sorry, ma'am. Oh. Sister, you think about what I said. Your grandmother practically raised you. 
I can't help it if she don't understand what cool is. And if coolness is what makes me happy, then that's what I'm supposed to do. And I don't care what anybody says. Pastor, I'm over here. Oh. This just ain't like you. Linda May, why in the world would you let that chicken loose in the bathroom? Because I need to keep her warm until it's time to pluck her. <laughs> well, that bird is going to plumb crazy all cooped up in there. I mean, are you sure chicken plucking is the best way to get your name in the world record books? You know good and darn well I'm the fastest chicken plucker in all of Cricket County. It's a perfect way to make a name for myself. Well, we just cannot leave that chicken in there all cooped up. Just till she has time to warm up and calm down a little. Besides, I got a whole lot of campaigning left to do myself. Just let her heat up a little bit and it'll be all right. Well, come on. It's your turn to help me. Merry Christmas, girls. We ain't got time to chat right now, Mr. Lloyd. We're on real important business. Don't worry, Grandma. I'm sure they'll call back later. Well, howdy, Mr. Lloyd. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, Elsa. Oh, I see you got Grandma's manger fixed. She'll be tickled to death. Yeah, that's just a loose screw. She's sturdy as ever now. I'll put her over here with the rest of the nativity. Where's Mary and Joseph? Uh, Grandma normally sets it up over here for the jukebox. No! Look at that plain old tree. I know, that's Fester's job, but he ain't quite been himself this year. Well, you know, you just can't have... Christmas at Emma Jean Taylor's Cafe without the nativity, said her daddy Bill. Yeah, I know. I'll find it before the Christmas story is read tonight. Hey, would you like a cup of eggnog? No, nah, thanks. Me and Big Mama, I mean Little Mama, we got to go take the Christmas gifts to children's shelter. You know, I was helping out over there earlier today. Yeah, the twins are supposed to come early, but they never showed up. Well, you, you can't rely on them. You know, they're all busy doing their own thing this year, their contests and everything. Well, Merry Christmas to you and yours. Now, Merry Christmas, Mr. Lloyd. Here's our chance. I'm going to get my purse. Oh, Grandma, you got a Listen, I'm going to drop my purse, and when he leans over to pick it up, you grab the wheel out of his back pocket, okay? So you think about what I said, Pastor. I'm going to check to see if Grandma Taylor needs the help in the kitchen. Okay. <laughs> First time all year he decides to be a gentleman. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, nothing, nothing. Just go back to what you were doing. I just looking over this manger here, but it just ain't the same without the baby Jesus in it. Elkin, why don't you look and see if Jingle Bells is on that jukebox? Well, okie doke, I'll do that. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mimi, but I don't see Jingle Bells on this here jukebox. Cousin, of course you don't. Cousin Elkin, what a beautiful manger. So authentic. Yeah, I know, but it just ain't the same without the baby Jesus in it. Matter of fact, my whole family ain't the same this year. Fester getting all stubborn and Brenda May in her contest and Linda May and whatever she's a dabbling in. And to top it all off, the baby Jesus is a missing in action. Well, maybe things will get a little better in a little while. Uh, Linda May, could you bring us some menus, please? I'm a little busy right now. Now, Glenda May, we got a party of three right here, and I know this young gentleman here and his elderly mother are hungry as a whole. <laughs> okay, Cousin Elvis. We'll be back in a minute. I need you in the kitchen pronto. Grandma, where's the nativity? Still in the attic, I reckon. I can't get nobody to get it down and set it up for me. Mimi. What? We'll see if we can find it. Come on. I know you're cool and everything, but I need your help in getting this place to look like Christmas. 
Because Elkin, come through this. I'm trying to do my own fight. Hey, I'm over here. Just, if you would, just take a five and get a The cool move magazine don't say nothing about decorating no Christmas tree being a cool thing to do. Well, okay. I'll just do it myself. Then after I get that tree decorated, I'll get the nativity set set up myself. Give me this one. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to have Grandma to teach it. All right. See you later. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. The service here is terrible. Well, how do you know you ain't had none yet? <laughs> I don't need a menu. Just bring me some caviar. One roasted chicken coming up. <laughs> Why did you put down roasted chicken when I said caviar? Because I know what chicken is. Now, Miss Galloway, they may be fresh out of caviar. Out of caviar? I am a guest. You're a what? <laughs> a guest. A guest. One glass of Alka Seltzer coming up. <laughs> and for you, mister. Oh, Linda May, this gentleman isn't a mister. He's a judge. This is Judge Galloway. <coughs> you mean to tell me you're an no. honest to goodness judge? Well, right now, I'm famished. I'm pretty sure Oswald said judge. <laughs> he is a magistrate. He's a justice of the peace. Now, would you please take our no! order? I surely will. Here's y'all something to drink in three straws. I gotta go check on something in the kitchen. Uh, Glenn May. Young lady, what is this fly doing in this iced tea? Cooling off, I reckon. It's real hot in the kitchen. <laughs> Wait a minute, Silver. What, what's the chef's surprise? Uh, she don't wash her hands. I'll be right back. Let me go Let me show you my costume that I got for the towel portion of the contest. Not now, Brenda May. I got something real important to tell you. I like that towel. It's about winning the contest. I got it. <laughs> See that fancy city slicker over there? Cousin Oswald let it slip and no. he's an honest to goodness judge. The dick did you say? It's a truth. <laughs> they spilled the beans and no. then tried to cover it up. No. That's what they said, all right. Judge. Why, I bet he's secretly going around checking on all the contestants. Listen, just act like you don't know anything's going on. Go back over there and act no. nervous. Just go back over there and act real normal. Cause I got a plan to get that judge to remember who I am. Uh, here's y'all some mustard and ketchup. Can I get you anything else? Well, we have more than anything yet, Glenda Bay. Well, what are you waiting for? <laughs> I don't have to take this. Oh, please sit down, Ramona. Uh, Glenda Bay just bring us three of the turkey specials. We ain't got no turkey fast for never shot none. No. Uh, how about the roast beef? Cal ran away because Brenda May's got to close the gate. <laughs> well, how about the chicken then? Glenda May, have you seen my chicken anywhere? <laughs> oh no, Grandma Taylor, she ain't in the bathroom. <laughs> well, I didn't reckon she was in the bathroom, but she's just up and disappeared. Uh, there'll be a slight delay on that chicken. <laughs> uh, why don't you just tell us what you do have? Well, Fester run over a possum on his way home from oh, work today. Oh, uh, Just bring us out some rolls, Linda May. And would you like them rolls in the form of biscuits or cornbread? Biscuits would be fine. Cornbread would be easier. Okay, fine. Bring us out some cornbread. Chuck's just dip a napkin in some gravy. We're starving out here. Okay, I'll be right back. Uh, Judge Galloway, I've been working for the Gibson and Miller Law Firm for about five years now. Uh, I graduated law school and passed the bar. Well, what are you getting at, Tippenheimer? Well, I'd really like to continue working for Gibson and Miller full time, and I know that a recommendation from you would carry a lot of weight. 
Well, you know, I've always thought of you as a... a hard worker, initiator, man that gets things done. As a weak-minded pushover. But, seeing as how commanding and persuasive you are with that inept server, I may just be able to find something for you. Uh, Glenda May, she's not inept. What's that? Uh, oh, well, thank you, Judge. Thank you very much. I must say, this business talk is so boring, especially at Christmas time. It's so blase. I think I'll go and freshen up. <laughs> Hey, you the one who's decorating the Christmas tree you've ever been yet? I think not. And I'm sure you can tell for yourself, I am not a fan of manual labor. Well, what does the president of Mexico have to do with anything? And why, may I ask, are you dressed in such a manner? Are you a simple nincompoop? No, ma'am, I'm a real nincompoop. <laughs> And if you're going to the John, be careful. I have you know, I never go to a John. Well, that's probably why you're such a bad mood. <laughs> I just want to let you know that the door sticks a little bit. Just trying to be real neighborly, that's all. Hey, there you are, Fester. Yeah. You know that mule you sold me to give our new preacher for Christmas? Yeah. Well, I told you before, your body didn't look too good. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, too. <laughs> hey. keeping the chicken in the ladies' room. Well, just till I practice plucking it, then I was going to give it back to Grandma and Taylor for stewing. Well, you can't keep a live chicken indoors. It isn't sanitary. <laughs> Besides, what about the smell? Well, I figured he'd get used to it. <laughs> George, I feel a type of poultry. No, ma'am, you can take my chicken. Everybody <laughs> take that thing outside. Right now. It's okay, Cotton Nawa. I'll take care of it. You poor little thing. You, she scared you out of your whole mind. <laughs> <laughs> to help you out. That is not what I will. Mimi, remember, this is a floor show and you'll receive tips. Tips? As in money? Ooh, let's do this thing. Well, I sure am obliged for you two helping me out like this. Now listen carefully, because here's the plan. I think the color's returning to her face. George, is that you? <laughs> I'll get a wet towel for her. What, uh, uh, what cardboard box? What makes you think there's another chicken?
sleeping in the bathroom. What are you talking about? You just remember one thing. Whoever said nothing's impossible never tried to pick up a bald-headed man by his hair. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Let's sit right over here, my little hang walk. I'm sure I'm obliged you two for helping me out like this. Thank y'all for helping me out like this. But you know, to be quite honest, uh, I'm just as nervous as a tick as a tick on dip day. <laughs> It will be fun. I haven't performed on stage in such a long time. Remember, Petunia, you promised me tips out of this. Bart Brenda May, dear. Yoo hoo! Merry Christmas, Brenda May! I'll be with y'all in a minute. Uh, Brenda May, why ain't you taking care of our customers? Well, if it isn't, I believe Bremen Cooper. It's about time the two of you all got yourself in my cafe tonight. Uh, we didn't come to eat. We did that over at Dixie's Diner. Yep, we come to say the floor show. What in the Dickens are you talking about? Well, the floor show they're out there in front of the about. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. Come see the floor show. My wife's hyperventilating. Wonderful. Glad to see you all relaxing after a good meal. Come <laughs> see the floor show. Linda Bay. Linda Bay. Linda Bay, Taylor, get yourself in here. Right now, get in here. What do you think you're doing shouting like that out in front of my fine establishment? Well, Brenda May told me to. Faster, you can come on in now. I can't take. Well, take off your glasses. Could we have everyone's attention, please? And the nativity scene hasn't even been set up yet. Shh! Grandma G, we want to hear this! Grandma, I got some good news and some bad news. Well, land sucks. What's the bad news? Well, the health department's on the phone. Well, what's the good news? They can't find us. <laughs> <laughs> Judge. What's going on over here? Don't ask. Just get your tips ready. Have a seat and you'll find out. Linda May, get the snow. <laughs> Our little quartet will perform for you now. Quartet? But there's only three of you. Yeah, it's a very small quartet. <laughs> uh, I would like to give you a little sneaky peek of the performance I'll be giving this year at the Miss Cricket County Contest. Oh, look, the snow is beginning to fall. <laughs> Linda May, you're on the wrong side of the window. Oh, never mind. Just get over there by the jukebox. <laughs> Now, it's a play like it's snowing outside, but we're all going to be real snug and cozy on the inside. You know, big old fire in the fireplace. <laughs> hey, my name is Brenda May. It's nice to see y'all here. I like for you to sit a while so I might bring you cheer. I'm smarter than a vacuum hose. I'm cuter than a pup. And if you cry, I'll blow your nose. If you fall, I'll pick you up. <laughs> I believe in living by a special creed in my life. Dear Lord, grant me the senility to forget the people I don't care for, for the good fortune to run into the ones I do, and the perfect eyesight to tell the difference. Kind folk, do you ever feel like some days you're the dog, and some days you're the tree? 
<laughs> Some days you're the bug. Uh, some days you're the windshield. Do you ever feel like a sad math book because you just got so many problems? Well, if you ever have one of them days, you just call on good old Brenda May. She'll always be there for you because I am a friend <coughs> to the world. Peace is what I bring to you, all wrapped up in my smile. I want to sit down with the world and chew the good of wild. So when you're out on that road, you're free without an oar. Don't forget you've got a friend in this young country girl. What in the Sam Hill going on here? If you don't mind, we're just trying to make a little bit of money. Can we hear rocking around the Christmas tree next? There won't be no rocking around no Christmas tree here tonight. Hate rotten to your look. It's ugly. How did you like my routine, Your Honor, sir? Your performance was ineptly executed and tremendously blase. Why, thank you. I made it all up by myself. I give up. I can run this cafe all by myself. And I hate to admit it. But you city kids are about as useful as a pocket and a pair of underwear. <laughs> hey, everybody. Have y'all forgot it's Christmas time? But, Elkin, I just wanted to, you know. Yeah, you, you just wanted to. Maybe that's the problem around here. Everybody's so dead burn wrapped up in what they want. When did Christmas become all about me, me, me? And the same goes for you, Glenda May, and for you, Fester. Poor Grandma's been so busy around here trying to get this place in shape for Christmas so her customers could enjoy a good Christmas dinner. Hear the Christmas story read and see the nativity set here like it has for the last 50 years. It don't look too smug. This, I'm even ashamed of you, Cousin Mimi and Cousin Petunia. I know y'all didn't come down here to see what you could help out in this cafe or to celebrate Christmas with us. Y'all came down here to see what you could get out of this. Well, here, just go ahead and read it. I'm not so sure that I even care anymore. But two of you don't just stand there and watch what we get. Ow. He's trying to make a point, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but Cousin Alton, my cool dude magazine says that I should look out for number one. And the TV says that I ought to make a name for myself. <coughs> but we should try to stand out from the crowd and be noticed, because we deserve it. I know what the problem is. Y'all are being torn in two different directions. The world tells you you f should find yourself in the sun, but the Bible tells us we should find ourselves in the sun, the S-O-N sun. Wow, Elkin, I believe you've set us straight again. Judge Galloway, I owe you an apology. I did have you up here under false pretenses. I was hoping that if you saw me helping my grandmother in her cafe here, that you'd put in a good word for me to keep my job at Gibson Miller Law Firm. Boy, do I feel like a dummy. Grandma, I ain't helped you one bit in your cafe today. And, and, and look where we kept the baby Jesus, too. Yeah, and feeling so good about myself was supposed to make me feel good, then why do I feel so crummy? Well, at least we've got two locals to share the Christmas story with. Forget it. We came to see the floor show. And it was awful. 
<laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Cousin Elkin, you've done it again. You put us in our place just when we needed it the most. I wouldn't admit this to anyone but you. Those country cousins are starting to grow on me like uh, Kudzu on an oak tree. <laughs> growing and growing and smothering and covering and. Oh, excuse me, I want to catch my breath. <laughs> Y'all remember what the Bible says? We were put here on earth to reflect God's love, not to direct the spotlight onto ourselves. Exodus 15, 11. Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you? Majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonder. Psalm 19, 1. Why do the heavens exist? Why do they exist? The heavens exist to declare the glory of God. 1 Chronicles 16, 24. Declare his glory among the nations his mighty deeds among the peoples. Romans 11.36 God made all things and everything continues through him and for him. To God be the glory forever. 1 Corinthians 8.6 There is only one God, the Father, who created everything and will exist for him. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine amongst men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. John 3, 30. He must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. The mood sure changed quickly around here, thanks to Cousin Elkin. Oh, and you're probably wondering what <coughs> Zeke's amendment said. I, Uncle Zeke Taylor, leave my largest diamond mine at the foot of Mosquito Ridge to the fine folks at the Cricket County Children's Home so those youngins could enjoy the finest care that money can buy. And needless to say, not one person was disappointed in Uncle Zeke's decision except me. I mean, not even me. <laughs> Philippians 2, 3, and 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but out of humility find others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see the light. Above the deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shine the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. That was the most touching thing I've heard in my life. George, why don't you bring me here more often? Whatever you say, dear. And I'm sorry I was so short with you before. And Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas. If everyone will excuse me, I don't think I'll go out on that. Hey, everybody, what are we waiting on? Fester, get this tree decorated. Cousin Oswald, get the nativity set set up. And Glenda may get some music going on this here jukebox. Fester, how in the world do you plan to play the shepherd in that silly kid? Oh, don't worry. The good shepherd is always prepared. <laughs> Get 
the net. <laughs> Uh, we'll be glad to autograph. <laughs> 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 <laughs>